Hi, I'm Andy. Welcome to Screenfire. And today we're going to talk about the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that came out on Netflix, or as the Danish would call it, Motorsafs Massacren. Isn't that right, Tony? Uh, I don't speak Danish, but sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what the German title of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is? The das, original title. Das Blutgericht von Texas. True, true. That's, Which, that's a blood feast in Texas. Pretty cool. I about, say. Yeah. 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 Yeah, kind of. But now it's all about the new uh, Netflix uh, movie. Um, yeah, I think it's my turn to tell what the movie is all about. Yeah. And before we start, um, there are spoilers in this video because you can't talk about the movie without spoilers. It's yeah, almost it's impossible. Like we have right from the start to talk about that people will die in this movie. Are you sure? Quite sure, yeah, yeah. Quite sure, yeah. And, and they die a pretty cool and gruesome death. So, spoiler alert. Um, yeah, it's a, about a group of young people who go to Texas in their electro car. And um, I hated them from the start. They're very self-righteous, uh, annoying people who tell other people that guns are not cool. And because I love guns, I d didn't like them. Um, but yeah, they go uh, to the town, I uh, forget the name, doesn't matter, in Texas, somewhere in Texas. And they, um, they uh, buy, was it one house or a street, several houses? I think it's practically a ghost town and yeah. they buy the main street just to resell it or something. Yeah, they want to auction it off to a group of other people who come in uh, in a bus and yeah, that's pretty much the story. Uh, they go to a, um, to a Waisenhaus. Uh, um, orphanage. Thank you, orphanage. And um, there's a woman uh, in there and she tells them that the orphanage is still hers and she doesn't sell it. Yeah, she, she told the group of, I think it's cooking influencers who bought this. So random side note, I don't know why this is necessary to mention, but they are. And uh, she paid off all that her, her debts and still owns the house yeah. where all the other buildings in the city, uh, property of the bank. Yeah, but um, she claims it's still hers but no one believes her so the police comes in and no she gets she's uh, no 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 it's, it was the other way around first she gets the heart attack and then the police comes and brings her away and she dies and with her is her only son, son or i don't know it's Only letter face yeah, yeah it's Papa. you you can see his face yeah so and um, she dies uh, on her way, her way to the hospital and shit goes down. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And that's why we can't do this without spoiler because the main plot hook is already a spoiler. True. <laughs> and yeah, did you like it? I liked it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say I, I liked it. I, I loved it. I, I really enjoyed the movie. And I know it's a split opinion at the moment. Some hate it, some love it. I really had fun with this one. Yeah, but let's note down, you're more excited than me about the movie. Which doesn't mean I think it's a bad movie. It's just, it, it has some flaws, which yeah, really bothered me. Definitely has some flaws, but... Yeah, um, let's do the old uh, pro and con list. Uh, do you want to start or should I? Um, let's let's start with my first con because it's one of the best things about the movie is how aesthetic, uh, how aesthetic, yeah, the violence is. It's okay, like yeah. it's so cineastic, but in a in a gory, not disgusting, but in a funny way. I would yeah. Almost say. It's, it reminded me of 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 uh, because it's not as silly as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, but a lot more bloody and gory compared to the uh, 1975 or uh, 74 original. And it, it's really a fun splatter movie. I, I, it's very atmospheric and you sometimes there are moments you care for the characters even though i said before uh, they're annoying as fuck but <laughs> it changed it, it really changed uh the two main characters at the beginning i hated them and the both guys the sisters yeah the sisters I thought, oh you're so annoying uh, but about 15 minutes into the movie, it changed and all the other characters became annoying. And I, yeah, because they tried uh, to, uh, um, you know, the, 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 it wasn't the main character. Was it the only, the only guy in the group? Yeah. The black one? Yeah, 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 he was. Yeah, the he, cook. The cook, yeah. yeah. He, uh, as mentioned, he uh, didn't, by the house, he just, I, I, I didn't even know if he tried to cheat her or no, I, what I was his deal? I think he, he didn't know about it. I yeah. think they just thought they bought the whole city, but they didn't. Yeah, he, he wasn't, he <laughs> wasn't dishonest, but he was, the old woman dies and his reaction was, hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I hmm. was right, so I don't care. Yeah, I don't and care. And then he wasn't right. But we talked about the violence. Yeah, we talked the, about the violence. And the funny, gory, aesthetic thing, if, if you can say that, I, I don't of want... Of course you okay. can. Then, then they say... Fun. Violence can be fun but in The first movies. kill in the movie is one of the best examples for it for me. Yes. Because he grabs <laughs> um, the hand of the deputy, breaks it mid-forearm, and it's then you have an open split forearm bone and he rams it into its face. And it's yeah. like, oh, we're 20 minutes in and that's how it starts. It's I, a I good, like, yeah. good opener, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I did a little bit uh, of research and apparently uh, the director, oh, damn it, I forgot the name, but it doesn't matter. The producer was the director of uh, the Evil Dead remake. And apparently um, the first cut, uh, they had to reshoot all or, or most of the gore scenes because it wasn't violent enough for the director, uh, for the producer. Yeah. Who directed Evil Dead. They, yeah, so. they fixed it. Yeah, they, they <laughs> definitely fixed it. And if you like splatter, if you like gore movies, it's definitely a movie for you. Yeah, they, they went a little over the top, but in a good way, not a... A stupid way. Yeah. 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 So what was your favorite kill? I like this one a lot. Mm. I mean, the first, I would say the first one because it was just funny. Yeah. And <clears throat> what really was kind of unsettling was the kill that... The redneck dude, I, I don't know, uh, yeah, I, I'm not good with like, names. You know, the, the yeah. dude with the with the beard. That drives uh, the truck. Yeah, oh my god. He, Just a he, typical... He breaks his leg and sm is smashed his ha head with the hammer, uh, but in such a violent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way. It's, it's really gross. He, and he kicks his shin and breaks his leg in the opposite directions, direction and he still moves and tries to yeah. get to Leatherface and then he knocks him over and smashes his head with a hammer and it was like... Several times. Yeah, it was like, okay, the first five times, now he's dead and then he goes on and on and on until yeah. it's only mushy. It's a pulp. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's hurtful to watch, but in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. They, they do exactly what you expect from this kind of movie. Yes. And of course, uh, we have to talk about, uh, when we talk about the gore, uh, we have to talk about the bus scene. Because as mentioned, there is um, a bus coming in with people who want to buy houses in the area. And they're most mostly young people also, yeah. so 20, 25-ish, yeah. And Silicon Valley dudes from yeah. the style. <clears throat> it was so good. Letterface enters the bus and what they do is of course because we live in 2022 uh they 
pick up their smartphone and uh, film him. No, they're they on live streaming. They live stream it, yeah, yeah, and say, try anything, bro, and you're cancelled. And of course, Letterface's reaction is. Try anything and you're cancelled, bro. He kills them all. <laughs> <laughs> the bus scene is, it's like a party bus with blue lighted area yeah. where everyone's dancing and it, it's, it's a long shot. Yeah. It's, it's a long scene with the cats, but there are like 20 people in it and- Everyone it, is cornered. Yeah. It takes not hours, but minutes and he slaughters everyone in there and it's like, yeah, it's, it's that kind of movie and they don't stop they don't they don't let anyone get out someone tries to get out and this, this is one of my favorite kills um she tries to get out of the window because the doors are closed and the bus driver is already dead so he can open it and she tries to climb out and gets a little stuck he grabs her and cuts her in half and the, the front half plops out of the window and the back half is just in the bus yeah. and yeah, there's blue lightning. It kind of reminded me of the club fighting scene in Blade, but more violent. <laughs> yeah, the, the blue light did really something yeah. for the atmosphere in the scene. I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. But, and and yeah. when we talk about this, practical effects they used so much yeah. practical effects. Not there was was CGI as well, but they did a lot of old-fashioned handwork and. This is why it looks so good and yeah. aesthetically pleasing yeah, for me. I totally agree. So just from this point of view, it's definitely something you should check out if you enjoy gory movies. So um, do you have any more last points? Yeah, it's not a copy of the original. No. That, and that's Good, really good, because you can't copy the original. It was shot in 1974 and shot on uh, 16 millimeter, uh, if I'm correct, uh, or definitely on analog film. So it has this documentary look and feel to it. It feels really raw and dirty and kind of it's, it's really unsettling to watch. It's, you don't get a good feeling out of it. And you, that's the good thing about it. You, you told me they mostly used natural light settings. So yeah. they work with the, what they got rather than light up the whole scene perfectly. That's like what it makes so intense in some scenes because it's dark, but not... You see, you have one or two lights yeah. uh, when it's dark to light a whole scene and you can tell. And... Also, all the dead animals in the movie were real. <laughs> so, so in the old movie. In the old movie, of there course. There are no dead yeah. animals in the new and one, I guess. <laughs> we were talking today about the remake because I don't like the Michael Bay remake. Uh, just because they try to recreate the dirty look and the dirty feel. And for me, it feels kind of fake. You can tell... It, it, looks dark but it's kind of hollywood dark you know recreated fake yeah we talked about this yeah. and i said i liked it but just because i'm just that bit of piece younger than you then the old movie wouldn't have hooked me into horror movies when i was this age when i when i first watched it i i needed the dark and grittiness of hollywood because i needed the new thing the old one would be would have been too trashy for me i guess but it worked and if I rewatch it now, I'm with you on the same side. But it worked for me back then. So I can enjoy it on a different level, but I totally get your point. Yeah, yeah. I guess either you grew up with it or um, you can appreciate it if you're a little bit older. So yeah, so now you can appreciate it then. But the new one, the 2020 movie, gets the perfect line between it. It feels new for me, new enough to hook the younger people into this. Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't forget about the roots, the 60 millimeter G low budget, no name actor roots. So yeah, it combines of course, it, best it, of both worlds. It, it wasn't shot on 16 millimeter, uh, of, yeah, course. of course. Uh, it was shot on uh, Ari Alexa uh, on Cinemascope, and. 
I wouldn't say it looks clean, but it certainly does look digital to me because it is. Um, but I'm totally fine with it just because it doesn't try to copy um, or replicate the original. I think an important point here is that the remake, the Michael Bay remake, uh, is playing in the 70s. And yeah. the new movie is playing today, so the clean look fits the era, while it didn't in the Michael Bay remake. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, another plus uh, point would be um, Melody and Lila. They're both main characters, the that sisters. That was their names, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Melody and Lila. The sisters. <laughs> the sisters, yeah. The younger and the older one. Yeah, true. And, or let's call them Natasha and the survivor. <laughs> <laughs> because a friend of ours Has looks a little yeah. bit like her. Yeah. Similar hairstyle, Similar hairstyle eyebrows. Yeah. It kind of fits you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I really like them. As mentioned in the beginning, I, uh, my, my thoughts were, oh, please don't lecture me. Don't have this moral high ground or else please die. <laughs> Because I don't want to be lectured in a horror movie about what's good and what's yeah, not. And they didn't do that because it's, a, it's not the right place for something like this. Yeah. They, they started with it yeah. just to want you to want them to die for yeah. you. I, I think that that's how it feels. The first scene at a truck stop, they are like, oh, we have the moral high ground because we drive an electric car and yeah. we're so cool and we want to give this place life and you're just here because yeah. we pay you to who well, the other people they are here. So, yeah, and pretty fast they get the drive to, oh, maybe we shouldn't have thrown the old woman out of her house and now they died and it's our fault and we feel guilty about it and we shouldn't definitely definitely not argue about this just take it and they they get they get around that yeah, yeah. and lila um she's a um, mass shooting survivor and i really could understood that of course she has a problem with guns That's really a reason why I can, where I can say, totally fine, I get you. Probably if I would survive mass shooting, maybe I had a problem with guns as well. But um, mm. she even tries, she tries to, she doesn't say, oh, I don't want to touch it. She, she's touching it and she even tries to fight back with it. And she's pretty bad. It was funny because she picks an AR-15 and uh, I was watching it uh, with Anka, with my wife, and I told her, okay, she never picked up an AR-15 in her life. So at the moment she was aiming at Letterface, I said, click. And the next thing that happened was click. <laughs> I, I liked it <laughs> yeah. because normally in, in movies like that, they're just firing. Yeah. They, they don't think about it and it goes off like you would expect in a yeah. movie, but, but it didn't. Yeah, yeah, it was little nice detail. Also, uh, the way she was holding the shotgun. I don't know if you noticed, um, okay. she was... You hold it like this and you pump and you reload with every pump. Yeah. And she was holding, I don't know, it like this, R really awkward. You could tell she never held a, a shotgun in her life, but yeah, they thought about it and Yeah. I think it's a uh, good thing. And she was surprised that there were only two shots. Yeah. And it was like for me, okay, you've seen reloading the old woman, two shots in it. So she fired two shots, she reloaded two shots, and you fired two shots. And then you're surprised that it didn't work out as well as you thought it would. Like, yeah, yeah she had no clue and that was fine. Um, another plus uh, point before we get to the negatives, because... It's not a perfect movie, really not. It is a fun movie, but it has flaws. Um, Letterface. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Love the design. The old Letterface uh, was played by uh, Gunnar Hansen, and the new one is played by Mark Burnham. And he, Gunnar Hansen is dead, so they needed a new Letterface actor. And he does a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. He's 
He has the presence. Yeah, he's definitely. He's big enough, so like tall and big, he's both like. And he has this combination of aggressiveness and calmness. You know, yeah. he's calm and aggressive at the same time. He's What makes him really frightening. <laughs> he's more frightening than the old one in the first movie or even the second Hooper movie. Yeah. He's more energetic, but in a clumsy way. Yeah. They, and they left it out, but it worked out totally. They changed it uh, with the first remake, I guess, because yeah. I haven't seen the third uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the old ones. Only from the 90s. One, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 1990. Okay. It was 1991 or 1990. I've seen the first, the second, and the fourth. The begin was it no not the beginning it's uh, the beginning was the good one um, prequel from like the beginning was two thousand six <sighs> and the one yeah yeah there are nine movies Never mind. Let's, the fourth one yeah. it was just terrible I guess it was with uh, Matthew McConaughey <laughs> really a bad movie but <clears throat> they in all four movies they treated Letterface or at least in one two and four they treated Letterface as I don't know some some kind of idiot. Yeah. And that changed with the Michael Bay. Yeah, and he's also not an idiot in this one. Yeah, they pick up with it a little bit. Like Do they? the old woman, the mother, let's call it the orphanage woman. Yeah. Says like, remember being a good boy staying in your room? Yeah. It's, it's a grown up man. He must be about 60, 70 years old. But she still treats him like a boy. That's True. where they got that a little bit into the movie. But uh, when he starts killing, he starts killing. And he's really not that clumsy little no. boy anymore. At all. I would even go so far and would say it's one of the best uh, Letterface portrays we got yeah. so far. And he's pretty clever. Like, there's a scene where one guy comes in and he's hiding behind the door. And the girl under the bed knows he's hiding behind the yeah. door. But the guy... Who comes in doesn't so she moves with her fo foot a little bit the mirror so he can see but Leatherface notices it and sees it as well and just before the good guy can get to him he jumps out and smashes his knee <laughs> yeah that, that's a scene we we're yeah. talking about but but he's clever head, yeah. and he noticed and he noticed how how this mirror works it sounds stupid but how the mechanic the girl and the bed wanted to use yeah yeah well that would be the positive uh, things I have to say about the movie, but... The design, like yeah. the Leatherface design, the mask was great. I liked it. Yeah, I really loved that they didn't use the old one. That it was... Was it the face of the old woman? Or yeah, or? yeah, his it was, mother. Right? His mo mother. Yeah. mother so his mother. The orphanage mother. Yeah. yeah. She and died and he, he skinned her yeah. on, on scene. I really uh, like the aesthetic on the um, sunflower field. Yeah. With the dying sunflowers around him. Him standing there. It really looks great and threatening. And yeah, I love the look. And the old chainsaw is back. Yeah, the yellow yeah, one. The yellow the first chainsaw. One. Yeah, he's hiding it in the wall and he sh smashes the wall because he promised to be a good boy. But not any longer. And he gets his chainsaw back and what's the cool scene i don't know why they put it into the wall but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know but, but the story part is one for the the negative points I think. yeah because as in the 2018 halloween um reboot remaster re reimagining whatever you want to call it uh where they ignore everything except for the first movie um they did something similar in this one but just lazy and it doesn't work mm -hmm. as in the halloween well. movie it works out so well yeah. and here it doesn't at all yeah um sally the surviving um character from the first one from 1974 um she's back as an older woman and she wants revenge that's about it. Yeah, and I'm not sure why they put us in. Because no. 
she spent 40 years searching for him like there never happened in, in this timeline there never happened any other killings in this area so she never found him the whole time but there are murder documentaries and something about it and yeah that, why she, she became a police officer then retired her whole life she spent her whole life about it and she got back to the house but there was nothing anymore and i was like why 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 do you put us in and then they don't work with it they no. don't give it a backstory they just state this about her and then she comes to the scene when they used her for 10 minutes yeah. and the scene was so incredibly stupid um she tracks letterface down and he's sitting on the bed and she confronts him uh, with the shotgun in her hand aiming at his head and she says look at me do you remember me and he's like no. i don't give a fuck <laughs> put up his uh, takes his chainsaw and leaves the room his and she's texas just, chainsaw yeah oh yeah why so why stupid. on earth she wanted to sh shoot him and yeah. then she was in shock and then he gets all the time to pick it up move and he really moves slowly turn around and leaves, leaves the, room. the room goes downstairs slits into a car door threatens oh. the other kids there the kid and they are not kids like the other the adults. In the, yeah the other adults and then she suddenly comes out of her freeze runs down and shoots why i i, I do you know why? Because they try to explain because it was such a huge part of her life. Um, it didn't work out for me. Yeah, it didn't work out. There's for no me exposition. As well. No, no, nothing at all. But it was such a huge part of her life, what she had to experience in the first movie. So she was just shocked because she said, "Do you remember me?" And he clearly didn't, and she was in shock because. But if he there, didn't, it was, he didn't care. But if there didn't any, uh, if there happened any other of the killings we know from the movies in between, why didn't he remember her? Like it was literally the only time you killed someone or a group of people. Like they kinda. Well, Act they suggest like in the first yeah. movie with all the bones lying around that they killed several okay. people. It was literally the last time you killed someone. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was cheap and unnecessary. Like the whole backstory, they tease a little backstory thing with childhood photos of Leatherface standing in the orphanage. I think they just get a little hang on the Leatherface prequel movie where he's with his family and then gets in the orphanage like psychiatric orphanage i'm not sure what it is now and then gets back to his family i think they get a little hang on this part but they don't explain it why why then show it it's unnecessary just show the main plot the young adults who want to buy the house the mother dies and then you get back to your raging self you yeah. were 40 years ago why why all this little bits and pieces that don't end up anywhere. They try to pull off the same I thing. hated this. Yeah, I hated yeah, this uh, so much. As they did with Jamie Lee Curtis. And it's not even the same actress uh, because Marilyn Burns died uh, a few years ago. And so, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, Owen Forey. Oh God, I'm, I'm butchering her name. Uh, she, she does a pretty solid job, I would say. It's nothing special, but it's okay, but it's just unnecessary. Yeah. It's not her fault. She's just an actress. Don't get me wrong, but it's just she doesn't ha doesn't have a place in the movie. No. If you ask me. Not at yeah. all. Yeah, not at all. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, you, you you talked about the acting, what, what which was okay for her. I think yeah. it was there were some good and fitting act actors in the movie, and there was something like why why do you play this i'm not an actor myself i'm not much experienced. i played some movies but i would never say i could do it better but that's not my job my job is to review it and the blonde the blonde girl which dies first of the group of four people who drive into nowhere in texas the blonde girl the fiance i don't know her name is her death scene is 
lung and she's like oh no don't see me I, I can't. and then he stay and he's like oh i'm so surprised and i, I don't buy it yeah. i don't buy anything in the scene <laughs> yeah again um the sisters their acting was pretty good yeah yeah they're the main characters so yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. they're on point M- melody's acting especially when she was hiding under the floor uh for the i really I really believed her that she was frightened. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, although the uh, a chainsaw coming through the floor was <laughs> kind of ridiculous, but I, it's okay. It's a horror movie. Yeah. It can be ridiculous. I, I buy it. It's even though it's it's kind of silly, but it's it's okay. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? Yeah. <sighs> No. Do you want to see a sequel? No. 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 Why not? Maybe with new, new uh, teenagers or adults, but ju- just the same letter face. A sequel with the same letter face. And without all the subplots that yeah. want to connect to things they don't connect. Yeah, maybe. Just, st- just stupid, pretty violence. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would watch it, but I would not necessarily say I need it. That's true. I would watch it, but yeah, I'm not waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. There's an after credit scene uh, in the movie. I don't know if you... Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where he's <clears throat> walking towards his old farm and it's teasing a possible new movie or not. Or he's just going into the sunset. Nobody Live knows. Ever after. Yeah. yeah. Again and again. Again and again. And again. And again. Yeah, that's Texas Chance Massacre, the new Netflix movie. So what is your rating to <sighs> I'm indecisive. Again. Like I liked so much about this movie. And I got it si- excited and as it is, if you get excited you will be What's the word? I forgot about the word. I don't know. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, for me personally, I think I would rate it worse just because I'm so disappointed of the plot hooks they put in. It would be so much better if they would have left it out. So, but rationally speaking, just go first. I, I have to okay. think about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> um, I agree. With the uh, with um, Sally's plot, it's stupid, but in the end, it didn't bother me that much. It's stupid, okay, but I really enjoyed the movie, so I give it a eight point zero out of ten. Straight eight. I think in the genre, it's a straight eight. Yeah. Yeah. It's I... a ho- stupid. Yeah. Slasher. And I've seen so movie. many slasher movies that made up much more stupid plot twists and most of them do. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. It's just for me a big part. So, rationally speaking, a, a solid eight. I, I go with you. For me, emotional, it was just a seven because okay. I got overexcited. <laughs> so maybe give it a se- se- seven point. No, I give it an eight because, okay, okay, because okay. I can do it. Okay. For, for all the people out there, it's an eight. Okay. Yeah, if you enjoy that kind of movie, it ranks pretty high. Cool. So, eight it is. Um, if you enjoyed our review, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. You know the drill. And tell us in the comments what you think about uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix movie or all Texas Chainsaw, uh, Chainsaw Massacre movies. Tell us what your favorite Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is. That's a good one. So, what, what's your favorite? Oh, that's hard. I like the new one. And yeah. is it the beginning? The beginning is the prequel to the Michael Bay remake. And it's, in my opinion, one of the best, but not the best. Yeah, I, I like these two. The first one, because it's it's new and shocking, if you look at it isolated. And I like the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I would go with the original. But it's just because it's such a classic. But it also has some flaws and it's... Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, 
but I really like the beginning as well. It's 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 kind of hard. It's kind of if you would have asked me five hours ago, I would have said Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> but we just watched it and yeah, it was kind of cool, but also kind of annoying at the same time. <laughs> the pacing time. wasn't that good. Yeah, the pacing wasn't that good, and I know I enjoyed it as a kid because just because it was violent and bloody and you took it forbidden. much more serious you told yeah me. yeah i took it much more serious as a kid if you see it with 12 you think oh my god time for incoming mail it's <laughs> really but it's so over the top i i love over the top movies but it's not the best one i have to admit in retrospect so yeah i i, I don't know maybe the beginning maybe this one but yeah i go with the original it's always a good choice Okay, as mentioned, like, subscribe, tell us in the comments what you think, and yeah, we see you in the next video. Bye-bye!